So this is just, uh, we're not doing really anything that's quite Alice related right now, uh, but we're doing the uh, intuitive and accessible documentation editing project. Um, we found that there is an issue building the docs. Well, we've known that there's an issue building the docs, but uh, now we're hitting a roadblock on that, so we're going to solve this issue. Uh, so there's a few things that are going on. We've got a, a little bit of a complicated dependency setup on this one. Uh, so Pandoc is involved um, due to a, I think, free common mark requiring it, um, and free common, or no. Pandoc is used in the notebook Sphinx plugin um, to convert. Um, so we're stuck with it basically uh, because they haven't switched over. I think they still have an open issue where they haven't switched over. I think I've talked about this like 20 million times uh, to um, the, they haven't switched over to the, I can't remember what it's called now. It's for common marks, basically that replacement. And it says somewhere, it says what it is. Um, I can't remember what it is right now, but uh, it's, it's, it's the parent if you go find the Sphinx stuff. Okay, so, um, and they, and I, and the underlying problem is that the whole thing needs to have the API hooked in through the docutils API and needs to use the intermediate representation there, but they're not, for whatever reason, they're just, they're calling out to Panda, well, because it's easier than converting it, or writing all the code to convert to the intermediate representation. Okay, so, um, for path and, okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're just, we're gonna eliminate some variables um, and uh, uh, we're going to um, uh, we're just going to download Pandoc, uh, or at least we're going to provide an option to if um, not okay. So, Okay, so we will make this its own function here. Okay, yeah, so this should be its own function. Really. So, yeah, this should be an operation. We're going to make an operation here. It's going to be a, effectively an operation that creates a instance of an object and then has a cleanup operation also associated with it. So you can almost look at it like a data flow that's being overlaid onto the parent flow uh, with both. It, it, that's actually a set of two operations uh, where the uh, orchestrated context is the same. So then we'll say with, uh, so with, Pandoc equals context lib dot null context, uh, and then we'll say if uh, args or no, sorry, if um, if uh, tempter. Or let's see if okay. So what do we want this thing to be? We want it to be like a context slip dot null context. So we want it to be basically something that says: Is it going to be a temporary directory? Or is it going to be given a directory? See, this is all just too much code. <clears throat> okay, so let's just paste this here. Let's go off this. Um, def. Um, what is this thing? It's a uh, pandoc. We'll just do temper for now. We don't need to. What stuff that we're not doing. Okay. Um, all right. 
right, so. All right, so what are we going to do here? We're going to create the temporary directory. And yeah, so first we create a temporary directory. Um, and then we, and we're just going to use the context slip exit stack here um, because it's going to make it less with blocks forever. Um, and we're going to have a loop where we're going to want to do a with block effectively. Um, and then we'll yield. And then, so that means this thing will be a context lib dot async context manager. Why does it have to be async? Just because we want to not have to change that later. Uh, just because it's always a pain. Uh, so just clear async without this. Um, Python is not intended to be the most performant implementation of this. Okay. Um, Prepend to path. Okay, so let's do. Okay, so we don't need that. Uh, okay. That is here. Path. Okay, so. Yeah, that looks good to me. Should we resolve these? Let's do that resolve. That looks good. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, create a temporary directory. directory and then need to do grab okay so we're looking for examples and we're importing them directly into vim by just doing read um, and then running the command, grabbing the output of the command. Okay, and look at this. So this is exactly why we want um, async, right? So now we don't have to change that. All right, so get down a little hack archive. So let's give it the tempter. Okay, it's already tempter. Archive, archive. Okay. This thing is actually going to be standard one. Function. So we're going to make it an operation later. Okay. Okay. So here's the path additions, but they were using dot local. Here we don't care. We're just going to say. And it is a tar GZ. Okay, so then we'll do the new types. Okay. All right, so Linux URL, we grab the archive. Okay, so no, we don't need to say plus because that already is the archive, so that's the URL. And then we need the hash. So Linux URL. Um, I saw that. So I almost think we should just ditch the URL formatting.
Okay, uh, and ideally I think we would do some kind of regex, just rglob, and then apply a regex ourselves, unless rglob takes a regex directly. It probably, yeah, rglob, yeah, it takes a regex directly. No, but it takes a Python style regex, which is why you probably need to do a, red, a real, or not a Python, it takes its own kind of regex, and this is a problem in several places. Okay, so uh, we need the hash still. Um, All right, so what's the hash of this then? Mm. All right, so there it is. Dang it, and we want shot 384 some. So this is the hash. And curl will hopefully come back to us here and tell us that this is the hash. Okay, great. I do that. Right, okay, so download and unpack the archive. Great. And add add all of the bin directories within the extracted archive to the path. The path. Can we write that all in one line? Yes, we can. All right, do a new line. All right, and then we'll just format that like that. Um, pan All right, okay. Um, Yeah, I'll be right.